Well, welcome back to Your Questions, My Answers, episode 38. This is segment three, and uh, this is where Brian and I just sort of uh, talk back and forth about some discussion topics that we came across and found interesting. Uh, before we get started, I want to let you know that uh, segment three is sponsored by CigarPlace.biz. Uh, if you head on over there, uh, Julian will take care of, you, care of you. He's got some great pricing and uh, some hard-to-find items that uh, you, you're... Uh, not only are you going to get a good price on, but uh, he's going to have in stock. So head on over and check out Julian and CigarPlace.biz. Now, the uh, first discussion topic came from two posts that were put on the front page of Stug Your Review uh, on repackaging and reblending. And uh, I just kind of wanted to talk back and forth with Brian to see uh, what your Brian, what are your thoughts on uh, when a major manufacturer either repackages or or reblends a particular product that's been out on the market? Uh, what do you think about that whole process? Does it change your insight on whether or not you're going to purchase the cigar, or doesn't it make a difference at all? Well, I, I haven't got given too much thought on on the whole process. I mean, a little bit. I know that uh, Camacho has uh, repackaged a whole bunch of their, their smokes, and apparently, um, I think they're reblending the El Legendario. They repackaged the Select. I think, I, I don't remember if that's reblended as well. Um, it's you know it, 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 if it's reblended uh, I'm in you know obviously I, I feel kind of the need because we review smokes and people are always asking us our opinion on cigars I, I got to go out and smoke one so in that respect if you reblend a cigar and I, God help me I'm going to say this and I hope it's not going to encourage everybody to go out and reblend every stick they have but if you reblend a cigar it, it generally means I'm going to go out and buy one and, and try out the, the new blend it, it, for no other reason just to know what it is how it's different what I think of it etc you know so um, so there's that um, I don't you know I don't know it, it, it I kind of hate to see that sometimes because I think some things get reblended that are you know are just fine the way they are um, you know, you reblend it. You got to go reevaluate it. You know, so to find out if you if you like the new one. You know, if you're going to miss the old one, that sort of thing. So I mean, th there is that. It's it's sometimes it's a shame. I mean, if it's a, if if it's well acknowledged to be a dog rocket, I don't necessarily see a problem with it. You know, it's unpopular. And nobody likes it. Nobody smokes it. You know, it's not going to be a big deal if you reblend it. But if it's a popular stick and you re reblend it, it's kind of I kind of think that well, you know. Maybe you should have come out with an, uh, you know, another another smoke instead of that. Um, obviously, and they're going to do what makes you know uh, best sense from a business standpoint, and you have to expect that there it is. A, you know, cigar manufacturers are a business, but uh, and that's just the stuff that came to mind. I'm not sure if that's really what you're driving at, Walt, with this or not. But uh, I'll let you go ahead uh, and uh, say your piece on it because I, I know you've spent a lot of time, you know, writing this up and you know talking about it and whatnot. So, yeah, what do you, what do you think, Walt? Well, you know, this whole uh, discussion came about um, when I was at a local cigar shop for uh, a pig roast. Um, actually, it was the day after the pig roast. Uh, my local shop owner was doing a Monday night football event uh, to kick off his, his, uh, his new hours for, well, it, it's confusing. The pig roast was to kick off his new Sunday hours for football season. Uh, the following night was a Camacho event, and uh, it was just to promote his membership, and it was a it was a dinner, um, and it was offered to a select few, and um, we all got together for this Camacho event uh, during store hours. Then after store store hours, we went and uh, we had dinner together and uh, and watched Monday Night Football, and uh, I was talking to my local Camacho rep, and uh, he mentioned that. Uh, the 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 El Legendario was a new blend. He was smoking one, and he said that, you know, this is the the first of the new blend that I've had, and I think it's much better. And uh, previous to talking to my Camacho rep, I talked to the shop owner who mentioned that um, the Camachos have been repackaged, they've been reblended, and uh, he liked the new one better. So I thought, you know, oh, okay, it's it's a reblend. I really like the old Legendario. I headed into the humidor. I picked up two, and uh, I smoked the first one there. And you know, it just it wasn't as good as I remembered the other ones being. You know, I don't smoke a ton of Legendarios, but I've had my fair share, and it was a cigar that I enjoyed. And 
and uh, the new product that he had in the humidor just wasn't as good as I remembered. Now granted, remember, I've only had two of these, or I, that was my first one at that point. I actually smoked another one as I was typing up this article. And uh, even that one didn't uh, strike me as as good as the other one did. So, you know, it, it kind of got me thinking, you know, these uh, these manufacturers are reblending products and, you know, they really don't need to. Why, why are they reblending a product that, that it seems like people enjoy? Well, uh, I was talking on Twitter and Carlos from New Jersey uh, found uh, this, this story on uh, Cigar Aficionado. And um, he knew that it was going to interest me because I did a review on the Nestor Miranda Special Selection, so he passed it along and it was information that uh, David Savona released saying that uh, the Nestor Miranda Special Selection is going to be Don Pepin Garcia's new project. So that's what prompted this whole write-up and, and I referenced Camacho in the write-up. And uh, it turns out uh, Dylan from Camacho's uh, marketing director uh, corrected me on, on the reblending. It, it, it seems that uh, uh, the Camacho Legend RO is not a reblend, but I'm not quite sure because I got uh, two different answers from two different people at the same company. So I'm trying to verify that before I do any sort of retraction or correct it and, and I still haven't heard anything back yet. But uh, in any case, it, it, that got me thinking, you know, what, do, what does everyone think about repackaging, reblending? And uh, there were some interesting talking points made on my post on reblending, which sort of referenced repackaging, and I wanted to get people's insight on that too. And my whole stance is, you know, I, I really don't like the idea of reblending. I, I think if you're going to change something, change the name, change, just make it something new. Because, I mean, how often do you want to pick up or have a cigar given to you and then look at it and say, well, you know, it's, it's packaged the same as it was before. Is this uh, the old blend or the new blend? Or is this made by this person or that person? It's, it's very confusing and I don't really appreciate that. Uh, I like knowing what I'm getting and, and not, not be, having any guesswork involved. And uh, the repackaging aspect, you know, I was a big fan of the Cam Camacho's old packaging. You know, I like the simplicity of it and when they released the new packaging, you know, with the, the fancier bands and whatnot, at first, uh, I. I I was kind of upset because I liked the other packaging better. I didn't like the whole, you know, give the give the line a new face. And then all of a sudden, you know, I, I got past that. And, you know, the new packaging looks great. Uh, I think it looks way better than the old packaging, but I still have that soft spot in my heart from, uh, from the way it used to look. Uh, again, the same way with uh, the Oliva brand. Uh, I mean, I think the, the repackaging of the Oliva product is what started to get them back on the map and, and made people stand up and see them. You know, the uh, the O-Bold was described to me as uh, the toilet seat box. You know, it was a run that had the cut in the middle, it had the flip-up lid, you know, it looked like a toilet bowl. And, uh, and you know, they repackaged it and, and it looks fancy and great. You know, you gotta love it. Uh, I don't mind repackaging as long as it doesn't affect the price point. You know, if, if the repackage for the sake of increasing sales and then we have to pay a premium for that extra packaging I'd, honestly I'd much rather have the old packaging stick around even if it's not that appealing or, or it doesn't look that great but again just one person's opinion uh, I don't mind repackaging too much just don't make me pay a premium for it and uh, reblending as far as that goes I'd honestly much I, I'd like to see uh, a new line come out rather than renaming a new one or, or reblending an existing line but you know, there are some exceptions to the rule. Take, for example, uh, Padilla Cigars. You know, he's got uh, the Signature 32, and uh, I think it's a 69, and I think there's one more involved. You know, those are his his brands. They're they're significant in his life. They're 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 named that way for a reason. Now you have uh, Don Pepin Garcia and Padilla have split have split ways, and uh, Padilla owns the brand. He's going to continue making the cigar. It's obviously a reblend. Now what? Should should Padilla have to change the name so that it's a, so that we know it's a different blend? Well, you know, in that situation, I don't think Padilla had much of a choice. So I, I don't know. I guess I'm saying maybe these manufacturers can pick and choose when they reblend and when they repackage. But in that one situation, I think it's acceptable to reblend and uh, and not change the name of the cigar. But if you're if a manufacturer is just changing the blend for the sake of rechanging the blend, I think they ought to just change change the name change the packaging and just start fresh and launch a new line but again that's just my opinion Brian did, did uh, I say anything that made absolutely any sense well I did remember uh, 
it, when you talk about not paying a premium for the uh, the packaging, um, the updates to the packaging, that that reminded me of something. But really quick, I got to say, I do like, I generally like the the new look and the the new look of the Camacho. I, I like it. It's it is flashy. It's it's just cool to look at. I I, I collect the bands. <clears throat> I, I've got them all stored away. I actually have them kind of in a, a little bit of a filing system and little plastic sleeves. And I, I, I like looking at them. I, th I think they're kind of neat. I like cigar bands. I mean, simplicity is good. I mean, don't don't get me wrong, but I like the the new, more artistic bands. I, th I think they're fun to look at. Um, but in terms of paying a premium for the repackaging, I was speaking with I think he's the national uh, Perdomo sales manager. I don't remember his name offhand. I prob I may have his business card here locally or locally. Uh, doing too much development work. I might, I might have it here uh, on my desk somewhere, but he was saying that uh, the whole 10th anniversary thing, they're, they're, re, they're repackaging everything. Um, there, I think there are, there's a, a smoke or two that's being reblended in the process, but the new packaging uh, is, is the way it's going, they're all going to look. And what he was telling me is, is, is they're going towards these more simple boxes. They're doing away with the whole, uh, the really, the, the heavily painted boxes that you might associate with with Perdomo and in as a result actually it's it's saving money I don't, I don't know that if that's going to wind up resulting in less the price going down I, I really kind of doubt that but at the same time in the process they're not actually raising the price of the smokes uh, as they as they uh, re repackage them at least I don't think so I mean that's the impression he gave me that the, uh, the price wasn't actually going up in the repackaging. Um, the, the thing I can think about is, you know, when you re-blend something, obviously like the Padilla situation, that's kind of a, uh, a situation where he, he's got, he doesn't have a choice and a lot of his stuff is getting changed, so, you know, he's got to work with that. But what I'm thinking of is maybe uh, people, some of the manufacturers should take a cue from Oliva. They've got the master blends line, but they're different blends each time, and they're, they're designated with different numbers, you know, Master Blends, the original, you got two, you got three, so if you're going to come out with a new blend of something, you know, maybe you need to designate it with, you know, if two and three is a little uh, simple for you or something, you could, you know, use Roman numerals or something, I mean, whatever, to, uh, to make it look snazzy and, you know, give it the sex appeal that you want to make it sell, but... You know, it, it is nice. I mean, that that way you know what what blends you're getting. You know, or you know, somewhere, even maybe even just designated on uh, the band in small small prints on you know the side or the back or something like that. Where, you know, or even on the inside of the band, there's all that real estate on the inside of the band that usually isn't used. It could be used to indicate what blend it is, or you know, when when it was made or something like that. It would be great to see that there. So you know when you're looking at a cigar when you smoked it what you're smoking so but just reblending something and you know packaging it the same way in general it's it's not something I'm a big fan of either so that's really that's my thoughts on it well you know the interesting thing you mentioned about the year is uh, the uh, the Essencia cigars from Palio um, I, I listened to uh, the interview that Bob and Dale did with uh, Mark Ob and uh, and they're they're dating they're they're date stamping their bands so that you know uh, that this cigar was made from crop you know the crop in the year 2006 2007 2008 whatever and every year they're going to change the band and or they, they may not redesign the band but they're obviously going to put the, the the proper date on the band when it was manufactured and uh, that's going to be one indication of of what you're getting and I think uh, that if that if uh, a manufacturer is going to to sort of go that route, you know. It would be interesting to 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 see a reblend with uh, with some small designation on it, stating that you know this is uh, this is post you know this is blend number two or, or it's post two thousand eight. You know, it, it would just be interesting to see something like that rather than leaving everyone to guess. Now, in some instances, they change the the way the band looks. They change the packaging with the reblend, but. You know, there are other situations where it just changes and you don't know about it until you pick up the cigar and you think to yourself, wow, this doesn't taste anything like I remembered it tasting. So, yeah, I think you make a great point about uh, giving us a date somewhere. Uh, you know, even if it's on the back of the band, granted, you have to take the band off to see what blend you're getting, but 
uh, it would be one way to, to, to keep everyone in the loop as to what blend it is and what you know what direction the company's going in. It'd be it'd be interesting. And and even more important than that, what they're you know serious collectors, people who are into really into aging and collecting smokes, you're going to really help them out. And it <clears throat> it might be a selling factor if, if you produce a good cigar and you have that information. You allow people to you know know what they're getting. I mean, they're they're going to you know go into the shop if it's something they can read without taking the band off. They're gonna they're gonna look at the box and say, okay, this is this is such and such a smoke from such and such a year. That's a really good year, or it's not a really good year. If you walk into a shop, you have no idea how <clears throat> how long the smokes have been there. I mean, you know, a lot of times you go in there and you're you're hoping to find something that's really it's that's had the benefit of some age at the expense of the the shop or the manufacturer. You know, stuff stock sits around. Some some stock doesn't move, and they keep it on hand just because it's you know it's a good uh, it's a good smoke or something they feel like they need to keep. You know, you go in there, and if you could see what when how old these smokes actually are, um, you might entice you to buy a cigar that you would you might not buy otherwise because you can tell that it's 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 been aged. You can you can you know you you know it's something that's worth picking up. So it actually may help. You know, having that may help move older stock because people can tell that it's old stock, and uh, you know, a as a result, it's been aged and it's you know has some it's of greater value, really. You know, that's so that's that's what I'm thinking. It's it's more than just helping us out at, at uh, the manufacturer's expense. It actually could be a way of of really improving the sales of, of some stock that's 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 older. <laughs> Well, speaking of older stock um, and master blends a little earlier on, uh, our next discussion topic has to do with uh, your your cigar trifecta. You know, what what three cigars would you smoke in a day to make it an awesome day? And uh, both of those items actually have to do with uh, my selection. Uh, yesterday I was over at a friend's house. I, I stopped over, and uh, he's a bit of an, an Oliva nut. Uh, most of the times when I when I bump into him and at, at the cigar shop, he's smoking a master blend. So uh, I went over his house yesterday. We you know we sit down to have a cigar. He, he offers me a cigar. I I accept and uh, light it up. Start smoking. I immediately thought it was a master blend. I didn't give it a whole lot of thought. And uh, I'm looking at him, thinking, well, you know this this has got the tattoo on it. This isn't the uh, the latest Master Blend, and I realized it was a Master Blend 1. And here he had given me a cigar that's been aging for roughly five years, and it was fantastic. You know, we, we hung out, we talked for a while. It was a great time. You know, I, I put my cigar down to rest in the ashtray, and, and I'm just sort of relaxing, and we're talking. He's, oh, you want another cigar? Oh, sure, why not? You know, I'm, I'm sitting there with a, a couple of cigars in my pocket, but he just keeps on offering them. So, uh, he leaves the room. He comes back from uh, from his humidor, and he hands me another cigar. It's Master Blend Two. So we we sit down. We enjoy a Master Blend Two. We talk. Have a great time. Uh, after that cigar was over, I had to get going, get home, and uh, I came home. I had dinner, and then I was just kind of lounging around. Decided oh, I'm going to have another cigar. You know, what what could I possibly follow a Master Blend One and a Master Blend Two with, but a Master Blend Three? So I dug around in my cooler. I grabbed one of the few Master Blend 3s I have laying around. Uh, I lit up the cigar. It was, uh, and it was a great end to a great day. Uh, it was, uh, I couldn't have planned it any better, starting with uh, the oldest Master Blend 1, then moving to the Master Blend 2, which isn't, which isn't available anymore, and then moving into the, the production, or the one that's available now, the Master Blend 3. It was just uh, a great combination of cigars. And I'm wondering, Brian, you know, what three cigars would you have throughout the course of a day that would uh, that would be the most appealing to you if you could just select three cigars any cigars to smoke what what would it be to be to make a perfect cigar day yeah I, I've been <clears throat> I've been scrambling mentally here to try to think of what that was I was thinking that uh, you know you got the master blend one and I, I was thinking about how proud I am at, at scoring a nearly complete box of master blend ones that I'm, I'm sitting on had a few of those, you know that that's that's a that would be a really good smoke to to uh, to put in the mix. Um, actually, I think I the only one I think I don't have right now on hand is the one that's available now. <laughs> um, let's see. Wow, that's a, that's a tough one. Let me think. <sighs> I 
I don't know. Um, I know we've done like our top five, but uh, I'm not sure. I'm guessing if, if, you know, price is no option and just, you know, pick anything. I'd probably pick a, a Padron 80th, uh, smoke another one of those. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Um, boy, that's, that's, that's a hard... It really varies based upon my mood on a given day. Um, I've been really on a Corojo kick, so a lot of the cigars I'm thinking of are, <clears throat> are you know, very much Corojo. So I might actually go for an all Corojo day. That might be what, what my thing is. I might... Maybe I start off with my Hoyo de Monterey, um, Dark Sumatra, and then just smoke nothing but Corojo the rest of the day. Um, I mean, I, I had... Uh, that If I could smoke another one of those CAO Visions that had the just... They had like a mountain of plume on it. It was just covered in plume, and that was a fantastic smoke. I would I would smoke one of those again. Um, boy, it, it's a really tough call. It really is. Um, there's so many good smokes out there that I really like, and it's really hard for me to just pick three for a perfect day without actually going and fiddling through my humidor and spending about 30 or 40 minutes, you know, ranking them in my head based upon my current mood to uh, to pick the one out, you know. <laughs> Well, that's, that's the interesting thing about the whole situation yesterday. You know, chances are I probably would have told you three totally different cigars, but when they just, everything just sort of fell together, and, and you know, looking back on it, it was like, wow, you know, I smoked three cigars yesterday. All of them were ultra-premium cigars. Two of, them, two of them aren't available anymore and are considered collector cigars. And there wasn't a single bad one in the bunch. All of them had perfect draw. They looked beautiful, and they smoked great. So it was, you know, it was an afterthought. You know, well, it was a perfect cigar day yesterday. It couldn't have gone any better. I just had three marvelous cigars. So um, this is just my little way of throwing you under the bus and uh, and, and making you scramble for, for answers, I guess. Well, I consider myself thrown. Um, the, you know, a perfect, uh, you know, my, my perfect cigar day is, is when I go to a hearth and, and uh, you go to the right hearth and everybody's got their, uh, their uh, Zycar travel box, their, uh, you know, uh, hearth box, basically, like my 40 counter. Some people have bigger ones. And everybody's handing out and swapping cigars. Um, and that's a, that's a perfect day when you're smoking something something completely unexpected or completely new or whatever or combination of those that that's that's a great smoking experience i mean any i don't think i've ever been to a her for i i didn't wind up really enjoying the experience regardless of what i thought of the cigars um you know that's that's a really good way to go <clears throat> the other thing is um i get a, a a perfect a perfect cigar day um of course like you know, IPCPR was, you know, every day was a perfect cigar day in, in my book, but if I could go back to just the Casa Fuente um, and just smoke nothing but but what they had on stock and spend way too much money, that would be another perfect cigar day in my book. You know, smoke the, uh, the Casa Fuente house blend, I don't know, maybe pick up an, you know, really expensive Añejo or something like that, maybe spring for one of those $80 <laughs> over the, uh, the $80 uh, funky uh, forbidden X's that they have there. I mean, you know, price is no option. You sit there, you drink some Cuban coffee or have a mojito. You, sm you smoke these incredibly incredibly rare, incredibly expensive smokes that, you know, for the most part, they're, they're pretty good. Um, yeah, that would be another perfect thing. But then we're getting beyond the cigars, and we're start talking more about the the overall experience. For me, it's really hard for me to divorce the uh, the cigar itself from from the environment it's enjoyed in. So it's uh, yeah, it's because <laughs> uh, I've I've smoked great cigars when I've just in a foul mood and just didn't enjoy them. So it, it really it really depends. I, I can't really separate the the environment from the cigar. I suppose that's what it boils down to me. So I have all kinds of you know there's all kinds of combinations that are just awesome that you could smoke. So yeah. I've been thrown in the bus. The bus ran me over and then backed up and ran me over again. So uh, I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm, uh, I'm dead at this point. <laughs> well, well, I know you have uh, an opinion on our next uh, discussion topic, and and it has to do with uh, one of the cigars that 
I, I would absolutely throw into a perfect cigar day, and that is the Ashton VSG. It's a cigar that I absolutely love it. I think they're fantastic. I'd smoke them all the time if they weren't so expensive. But uh, on our fan forums, uh, Omni House was, uh, was at a local cigar shop, and he ended up getting a, an incredible deal. Or, or uh, Okay, let's, let's put it in his words. He got, an, he got an absolutely awesome deal on VSGs. The downside was that they were beetle. They had beetle damage. Um, apparently, there was a, a problem with the box of VSGs, and the shop owner marked them way down, and was selling them at below cost. And uh, while and, and and Omni House is planning on freezing the cigars to, to kill the beetles for several days, and then uh, he's going to use the video that uh, that I shot a little while back on uh, repairing damaged cigars, and he's going to use. Uh, some spare tobacco leaf and some pectin to reapply small little patches over any beetle holes that are in the cigar. And uh, Brian, I, I know we talked about this a little bit off the camera and maybe we can sort of recreate that that invigorating discussion that we had about the whole thing. So what do you think about this whole situation and, and being able to purchase cigars that are radically discounted because of a, a serious issue? Well, to start with, I think that anybody, it, it just blows my mind that any any cigar uh, uh, shop would would knowingly sell beetle infested cigars for any price, and the reason I say that is 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 most manufacturers will, will take that back. It's beetle damage, you know. It's 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 not it's not their fault. They got a a, a, a bad product. They'll replace it. You ship it back, or you you destroy it. There. So in in that respect, the manufac uh, the uh, the store is not out any money. So there's absolutely no reason for them to, to tr attempt to sell that. And the thing is, is by keeping it in the humidor and by selling it, you're, ri you're risking the rest of your stock. Um, and, and you might not be able to, to you know, get that stock replaced because it was your own stinking fault. It, it just it blows my mind that you would even consider doing that. And what makes matters worse, in, 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 in Omni House's case, he got a decent deal. I think he... 75, 80%, 85% off, or something like that. So they, they cost him next to nothing, and he was interested in, in trying it out. So it's an experiment. Okay, you know, that's that's fine. But I went into a shop recently, and they had a 30% discount shelf, and they had a, be, a, a beetle chewed smoke in there. On the 30% thing, I brought it out to them. It's like, oh, yeah, that's why it's on the 30% uh, shelf, because it's got beetle damage. And I said, are you freaking crazy? Why are you even keeping this in your humidor? I mean, any anybody who comes into this place who knows anything about cigars will see that and turn right around and leave because you're keeping it in there. You've got you've got a problem with beetles. Who wants to buy your crap when you've got a problem with beetles? I talked to the guy and he felt shamed and he wound up throwing the cigar out. I'm like, I don't want you to give it to me for free. I don't want to be anywhere near it. I don't want a beetle getting on my hands and you know sneaking into my humidor. I don't want that crap anywhere near me throw it out. And I, I'm like, I almost issued a, a, an order to the guy and the guy was like, he was like, oh, okay, okay. I'm like, it, it, just, it just blows my mind. I'm like, you're not losing any money here. Throw it away before it ruins your stock and drives your customers away. Are you stupid? I mean, come on. Uh, anyway, so that's my thoughts on it. <laughs> but I'm interested in finding out how the patches work because I've had to deal with beetle-infested smokes that, uh, they they hatch you know in my in my humidor uh, after I got them and uh, they chewed through. Fortunately, I kept them in a plastic bag and after inspecting everything very carefully, I, I realized that they only damaged a few smokes, so I threw those out. I, I didn't bother trying to smoke them. I'm not interested in smoking beetles. I mean that just kind of I don't know. It just I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, eat bugs normally, so I'm not going to smoke them either. So uh, that's that's my thoughts on it. So, uh, do you have any more, any more to add to this, Walt? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I think Omni House got a great deal on on some cigars. Unfortunately, you know, there there are some high, there's high risk involved. Um, you know, it's it's bad enough that the retailer was keeping them with other cigars. You know, he he's risking damaging his own stock, and that's his own fault, and that's his own problem if it happens. Now. It's in that situation he he informed Omni House why why they were being sold so cheap. So 
Uh, that I don't think is a problem. You know, Omni House knew he had to freeze the cigars. He knew there was risk involved. He's going to store them separately, even after freezing, so that they don't. So if there are live beetles, they don't migrate to his other cigars. But now, what happens if uh, if uh, a uh, a retailer decides that uh, they're just going to mark the cigars down and sell them off? And, uh, and not inform the customers. You know, they go home, they end up putting their cigars in their humidor, and before you know it, their, their, uh, their stock, their, uh, you know, this, uh, this incredible collection that they've spent months or years developing and, and really appreciating is just totally obliviated by, by a problem from a retailer marking something down. Now, I, I went to my local smoke shop on Thursday, I think I stopped in, and I was talking to the owner, and I, I asked him, I said, what happens if you get a box of cigars that have beetles in them, you know, does the manufacturer take care of you? And his, his response was, well, of course, you know, all I have to do is call them up, or, you know, call the rep, call the factory, or, or call the call the the, 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 uh, the headquarters office or whatever, and, and let them know that I've got a problem with their cigars. In, in most instances, they just tell me to throw them out, and, and they, they're, they're pretty prompt in sending me new product. So there, there's no incentive to, to try to sell it unless you're looking to make extra money. Now, granted, you're handling the product, so there's some overhead involved, and and you are, uh, you know, you're you are at a at a loss. But to, you know, to turn around and sell a product, knowing full well that it's faulty and that there's a potential to destroy your customer's product as a result of making a few bucks, I don't like it, and uh, you know, it, it just it bothers me quite a bit that that someone would do that and and mark their cigars down, you know. 80% and and sell them off. Now, granted, I got to give credit to the, the shop owner for informing, you know, Omni House that there, there is a problem with the cigars. So, I got to give him credit for that. But I don't like the fact that he was selling off cigars that were that were most likely going to be replaced. So, uh, that's that, that's my issue with the whole situation. Now, uh, of course, this was on the fan forums, and uh, you know, I posted a reply to Omni House telling him, you know, freeze them extra long. You know, just let them freeze a little bit longer and make sure you keep them away from your stock. I'd be interested to see how things work out. You know, if if you're just putting two, maybe three patches on the cigar, I don't think you're going to you're going to run into much issue. But uh, you know, if you're patching 10, 12 beetle holes, you know, you're going to start to taste the pectin, especially the stuff that you're most likely going to buy at your grocery store. It's going to give you a tart flavor and um, I think that's really going to interrupt the flavor of the cigar. And unless you try to smoke this thing like a flute and cover up all the holes with your fingers, there's really no way around it. So I'm interested to see how things go with the cigars. Just uh, make sure you keep them separate, and uh, and you should be good to go. I mean, a uh, little bit of tartness uh, doesn't kill the flavor of the cigar, but it's definitely going to you're going to taste it. And uh, and I'd, I'd be interested to see whether or not uh, how significant the damage was. You know, if there's some if there's some pictures involved and whatnot. So uh, I don't know. Buyer beware, I guess. Uh, if if uh, you see something heavily heavily discounted, um, you know that that whole situation where you know it's too good to be true really falls into play there, and, and you should be aware and uh, be cautious. Now I did notice that he posted a, a few pictures <clears throat> since the ori initial post of, of actually applying the, the patches, and it looks like he had two or three to, to patch. And if, but getting back to my experience, the thing that made it so annoying, it's so infuriating, when I walked into the shop, and this literally happened like within the past week, um, is is that this smoke was sitting around other other smokes on a discount shelf. Some of them. I looked at some of the other ones, and there was there were no problems with beetles. Um, uh, that that was that was apparent, but so there was no designation that this is this is here because it's a it's a beetle smoke. It was the only one that was there, which is why I, I looked at it a little a little more than usual. But if you were just a uh, you know a casual you know light up a cigar while I'm golfing, or it's a weekend and I'm gonna you know light up a cigar while I'm barbecuing, I you know I smoke once every couple of months don't know a lot, you, you wouldn't know. I mean, and you would get this thing, it would draw like a straw, and, and you would be like, what the hell, you know, this is this is terrible. You'd sit there, you would have you would have spent, you know, basically the same price you could buy online, which is basically, you know, in, in, to my way of thinking, is like paying full price really anyway. So you would have spent all this money for horrible smoke, and, and likely uh, the person who would buy that wouldn't know, and would be probably not likely to go back to the shop to, to get it replaced, 
or go back to shop ever again, to be for that matter. They might say, well, that was a terrible smoke. So, you know, that's that's the thing. It's just it's so infuriating that you know it was it was there. They knew about it. They didn't designate it. They didn't throw it out. I just don't see a rationale for it. I just think that's just ridiculous. It's foolish. And the thing is, is what I didn't think about it until now. But that came out of a box that was still on the shelf that was se was selling at full price. So I'm thinking that well, one stick had beetles, um, and they clearly took that out. But maybe the other ones do too. I mean that, and it's just sitting there. So it just I don't know. I mean. Honestly, the uh, the ma the uh, the retailer deserves whatever they get in that particular case, and what they're going to get is they're going to get ruined cigars, and they're going to lose customers. I, I can tell you, I'm not going back there. I think that's just how it is. So, all right, I think we beat that one to death, uh, Walt. Unless you have anything else to you want to throw in there. No, n nothing else to add there. It's uh, kind of infuriating and, and agitating to think that. Uh you know, a, a product that, that could, da could da potentially damage stock is is being sold and whatnot. But, you know, I, I think we've said our piece. And uh, that about does it for episode 38 of Your Questions, My Answers. So, uh, Brian, why don't you take us on out? All right. Well, you know, thanks for watching. i got to say a special thanks to uh, to our sponsors for, uh, for helping us out, helping... Uh, support what we're doing here uh, Duke Cigar Company, Lighters Direct and uh, Cigar Place That Biz I actually got them all this time I forgot them last time, apologies about that um, you know and if you want to uh, ask us a question and I hope you will, keep them coming in you can uh, leave a voicemail question by contacting uh, wwhite72082 on Skype or calling 610-572-2636 um, we haven't gotten a lot of voice calls recently, and you know we could use some. It, it makes the uh, makes the episodes a little more interesting. Of course, you can use a contact form. You can uh, send us an email, uh, contact form, and the, the Stogie Review forum to uh, obviously we're pulling stuff from there. So there's all kinds of ways to uh, to send us questions. So if something's uh, you're curious about something or just want to hear hear our take on on anything in general re uh, regarding cigars. Uh, you know, go ahead and uh, drop us a line. And uh, I think that pretty much covers it. So uh, until next time, uh, long ashes.